Hi everyone, I'm Natasha Lane from the Netherlands and we're here with Michele from Italy. And he's from the Power Symphonic Metal Band Temperance and the Symphonic Metal Band Visions of Atlantis. And they just released their new acoustic EP called Memories of Green and Blue via Naples Records. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> So, hope that everything is fine with you. And yes, uh, I have this double duty, both with Temperance and Visions of Atlantis, but today I guess we are here for Temperance. And this yes. new this new uh, acoustic EP, exactly, that was released just a couple of weeks ago, actually. Yes. All right. Are you ready for my questions? I'm always ready to answer questions, yes. <laughs> <laughs> How did you come up with the idea to make a full acoustic AP? Well, actually, um, let's say that we had it in mind since quite a long time now, uh, because we all, we always loved this uh, intimate and delicate uh, aspect of music, the, the world of acoustic music in general. But we never really had a chance to uh, develop a real acoustic album because, you know, uh, everything is quite rushy nowadays. You are always uh, you you always need to be prepared to release new stuff. And when you have something in your hands, uh, especially in the metal environment, it's always better to release electric music. But due to the pandemic, I wouldn't say thanks to the pandemic because it would sound quite weird. But due to the pandemic, we found ourselves without shows, without any touring possibility, and with a lot of time at home. Uh, so we actually decided to finally uh, get into the uh, option of, of doing something acoustic and together with Napalm Records we agreed on uh, uh, releasing this acoustic EP that was also a way to promote better Viridian, our latest electric album, because uh, again, because of the pandemic we couldn't tour and we couldn't promote the album that was released in January 2020, exactly one month before the worldwide pandemic spread throughout the, the world. And, you know, in the end, we never really promoted Viridian properly. Uh, we only did it online and with, I, I believe we only performed eight shows in total, that it's basically nothing. So we took songs from Viridian and we put them in the acoustic version and in, somehow in this way we made them leave more. <laughs> So that's it. Okay. And was it difficult to change the original songs to acoustic versions? No, not really, because um, we always start from the acoustic, actually. Uh, when we compose a track uh, with Temperance, um, the uh, sparkle from where we, we start the fire, uh, the core idea of the track, uh, is always acoustic. It's like uh, Marco singing his guitar or me playing on the piano. Uh, so we have like the uh, acoustic arrangements and we sing the song uh, on this acoustic arrangement. Uh, then we evolve it to the electric versions that you can actually hear in the in the albums. Um, but going acoustic for us means going back to the roots of our music, going back to the core of our music. So this is what we did we got back uh, to the original idea of the song and we rearranged it in a more, uh, let's say, more sophisticated but still minimalistic way anyways, uh, as you can hear in, in, the, in the album. But songs like Start Another Round, songs like uh, uh, Gaia, songs like, uh, uh, I mean, pretty much all of the tracks that we chose for the acoustic EP, they were born acoustic. So we just brought them back to where they were born. Okay. And which one is the best, in your opinion, of the <laughs> So you're asking me to choose uh, if I prefer my son or my daughter. Yeah. <laughs> well, honestly, I can tell you that the funniest to be performed totally was My Demons Can Sleep. That is actually one of the main singles from Viridian 2. Um, the one that I think that earned some points compared to the electric version is Let It Beat, as I personally prefer Let It Beat in this acoustic version rather than in the electric version. 
and uh, the one that I probably like the least, so I can also give you a, <laughs> a different, okay, a different perspective, a different point of view, probably is, um, I think that is Nanook, because you, even if it's still great to hear it in acoustic version, you miss the children choir, you miss the backpipe in this acoustic version, that are all elements that I think they are really characteristic and peculiar for this track. So if I, if I had to choose between listening the acoustic or electric version of Nanook, I would definitely go with the electric. If I had to choose between the electric and acoustic version of Let It Beat, I would definitely go with uh, the acoustic version. Uh, starting around is super funny. I mean, every song has its own uh, uh, particular thing that makes it really nice, in my opinion, even in acoustic. But yeah, at least I gave you some different perspective. I didn't only tell you which one is my favorite, but also the yeah. one that I like less. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yeah, I have seen the live stream concert. Oh, great. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was really beautiful. Thanks. Also, uh, great sounds and in high definition. That's what we aim to. Yeah, we wanted to give a nice performance. I mean, it's 2021, you can offer HD video quality and good audio performance. So it would have been, you know, bad to give you something average. <laughs> Yes, and my favorite was uh, Let It Beat. Oh, see? <laughs> yeah, I thought it was even better acoustic. Mm -mm, yeah, I agree. And in, yeah. in the live stream, we even changed some parts compared to the um, to the recorded version in the EP. Uh, we changed some, uh, some parts between the three of us because, for example, the intro, the first verse uh, is sang by uh, me and Marco in the acoustic version in the EP. Uh, live, uh, Alessia was singing it, so we had like some uh, little differences that we wanted to, uh, you know, try out. Yes, and how was the live stream concert for you? Well, nice because we could finally perform together. And yeah. I mean, we really missed it. Uh, we are even thinking of doing something more in the future. We will see if we will have the chance to gather together and maybe have an electric live streaming too we are working on it but you know it's hard considering the traveling uh, restrictions and everything but it was amazing to finally you know perform for like a hour together playing music it was over one year that we were not performing together but at the same time it was cold you know because without crowd without public without anyone watching us but the of course the guy that was working the guys that were working on on the video i mean it felt really <laughs> something was missing i mean yeah. mu music is sharing you know and when you miss the warmth coming from the people that are watching you you also feel different and it's hard to give the same kind of emotions you know there is no counter part that is helping you <laughs> so yeah yeah i understand that uh, you wrote the songs let it beat and gaia yourself how did that went for you <laughs> well uh they're not the first songs that i write of course <laughs> the process oh, is <laughs> <I'm frozen. laughs> yeah no the process <laughs> is pretty much the same you know when, when they when someone asks me this question it's always hard for me to to answer because uh, when I come to writing music, it's like if I have the song in my mind already, uh, it's like a, a flash that comes in my mind and I listen to the song inside my head. I know it's hard to understand, but this is how it works. Uh, so yeah. uh, what I find complex sometimes is to listen carefully to the track that I have in my mind and put it down. So sometimes it's basic, it's just piano and vocals, and I try to rearrange it er, and develop it in the way that I like while I listen to it, while I compose to it. Sometimes it's easy because I can clearly hear what I have in my mind and I just, you know, um, start copying what I hear and put it down in, in music because luckily I can, you know, uh, I can basically play guitars, I can arrange the drums uh, with electronic drums, I can play the piano as, you, as you've as you seen uh, on the on the live streaming. And of course, I also uh, arrange, I mean, I work in a studio, so I know how to arrange a track, uh, you know, with uh, virtual instruments and everything. So 
the process is like this. I get the sparkle of idea that I have in my mind. I listen carefully to this song that is like playing inside my brain and I put it down. And I mean, I don't know how this works uh, for other songwriters because I believe that everyone has its own way. You know, some people, they start from a riff or a, a melodic line and they develop what they have uh, uh, into something that they like. To me, mostly every time I have a clear idea of the complete song in my mind, I just work on it. <laughs> hey, nice. There is a music video out of Pain the World of the Acoustic AP. It's a new song. I really like the video. It looks like it's all a painting. Uh, yeah, can you exactly. tell me about the <laughs> music video and this new song in particular? Well, keep in mind that considering the pandemic, we really had issues for the video shooting because yes. once again, it was practically impossible for us to gather uh, because of, again, the traveling restriction, the uh, area restriction. I don't know how it works in the Netherlands, but for example, here in Italy, uh, you have to, uh, you have a maximum amount of people that can stay within a certain amount of uh, square meters in a room. So even shooting becomes a problem because if the room is like only four meters per four, you can only have one people inside or two people, uh, one person or two people inside of the room itself. So it's quite hard uh, to, to do everything and we had to reinvent ourselves. And of course, even if it doesn't look like we went for the green screen for this video, because the colors that we have behind us, uh, they are uh, post, uh, post producted. It's a post production that makes, you know, the uh, violet and the green and the red um, and all the colors. But this was perfectly fitting because the song is called Paint the World and playing with the idea of colors and having us with this cartoon like uh, thing uh, is, is uh, perfectly fitting. And actually, this was an idea from Alessia because she, she said, well, the song is called Paint the World. Why don't we paint ourselves and why don't we paint uh, the surroundings that we have that we have in the background? So actually, this is quite easy to be realized uh, in, in post production. And everyone was enthusiastic when we <laughs> when we developed this this idea. Paint the World is a song that um, um, that I wrote, uh, especially for this acoustic EP. There is no other version. It's the, the version that you hear in the acoustic EP is the only one existing of this track. It's not like for Start Another Round or Viridian that uh, where you have like the electric version in the um, in Viridian, in the album itself. But mm, I don't think that we will ever release uh, an electric version of Paint a World and not even for Evelyn. That is the other track that we recorded, uh, that we composed specifically for this EP. Okay. And where and when did you learn to sing that good? <laughs> is this the question to me or to everyone? <laughs> I'm up for you now. <laughs> uh, well, I, be I believe I began singing when I was six years old, six or seven, because uh, my mother uh, uh, subscribed me to um, um, a piano course uh, when I was in the, what's the word for this, uh, the primary school, like the, the first school that you, uh, that you right. attend. Yeah, it's like a super primary school, okay? When you are six years old, um, we had options for, you know, uh, improving your skills. And my mother decided to uh, subscribe me to a, a piano course. And I was basically forced, let's use this word, to attend a, a, a choir singing course together with the piano. You couldn't only study piano, you had to do piano and choir. And this was my very first approach to singing. And I kept on doing this for like 10 or 12 years uh, until I was like 18. And at 18 years old, I, I was asked to join uh, my very first band by a friend, uh, a guitar player. They were looking for a singer and they, and they asked me to join them. And this was my first approach to heavy metal music, actually, to heavy metal singing. So uh, the answer is I never really decided to start singing, but I never really stopped to do it in my life. I never even questioned myself if, if it was right or wrong. I, I just felt 
perfectly uh, in my environment. I felt perfectly fitting in, in this world. And yeah, I just decided exactly when I was 18, when I first started singing in a metal band, I realized that I needed to study, <laughs> to study more because studying uh, choir singing has nothing to do with studying to you know perform on your own to play to go solo and i started to search for a proper music teacher singing teacher that could teach me how to do it better and they helped me a lot and of course i am thankful to all of them actually because they played a, a fundamental role in, in in my life but yeah i never really decided when to begin but i decided not to stop <laughs> Nice. So you have a classical background. Um, when it comes to music, to uh, instrumental music and choir singing, yes. When it comes to singing, I uh, at 18, I started to sing modern singing from the beginning, modern and jazz singing. So I kind of blended these two elements and yeah, made them my own. Mm -hmm. You did the recording and mastering of the new acoustic AP yourself. Is this always the case when you join the band? Um, so uh, it was like this with my first bands, you know, because uh, actually when you decide to be a musician, uh, you reach a certain point in which you realize that unfortunately in 2020, 2021 and anyways, after 2000s in general, uh, only playing live uh, doesn't give you enough income to survive. That's a thing for pretty much everyone. You can talk with many, many, many musicians and they will always tell you the same unless they are really, really, really big. I mean, of course, Iron Maiden, Metallica, Muse, Foo Fighters, I'm sure they live with the income coming from their music. But when it comes to, uh, I mean, smaller bands compared to them, no matter how big you are, but you still are smaller than these monsters of, <laughs> of music. Um, you can't make it only with live music. You have to make something aside. And I found myself really comfortable with the studio engineering environment. Uh, and I developed my skills. I studied also to become a, a real sound engineer, not someone who just puts himself on the computer and works with the audio. Um, so I you know, got my degrees and my stuff. And I started to run a studio that is the Groove Factory studio in with which I'm in which I'm working since uh, 10 or 12 years now. When it comes to my band, I always prefer to have someone else working on my stuff. Otherwise, you start a loop that is never ending because when you can actually work on your own stuff without paying someone and without having a limited time, you risk to enter a loop in which you always want to correct and make it better, correct and make it better, and so on. But again, the pandemic makes things quite hard to uh, to work with, and we decided to have myself working on the album. For uh, Viridian, I only recorded some parts, but the mastering and mixing was made by Jacob Hansen. The same things happened for um, the previous album of Jupiter and Moons. And when it comes to Visions of Atlantis, for example, I only took care of the mixing and mastering of the live albums because, of course, uh, it's a different kind of release. But when it comes to the real albums, we always rely on someone else. Uh, I don't think this is, yeah, I mean, it's not because of the skills, but it's because having someone external to work on your music it's always more, uh, it's always better because he will be or she will be more objective on, you know, everything. Right. Makes sense. And you have a big uh, collection of Lego. <laughs> You've seen the stories and everything. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I have seen. <laughs> Any other things you collect as well? CDs. <laughs> I mean, this is <laughs> an obvious, obvious answer. <laughs> <laughs> So actually, the Lego thing, the Lego thing is really funny because yeah, it, it, I started something. <laughs> I didn't consider the consequences, but yeah, um, actually, those are toys uh, from where I was a kid. Um, yeah. See, um, my my father uh, was a medic, and sometimes um, you know, patients to say thanks uh, purchase something for you as a medic uh, because I mean they are saving lives, you know, medics in general, they're saving our lives, especially in this time, it's so clear 
the importance of you know the sanitary system in in the world and when your life has been saved by someone you actually are thankful it's impossible not to be like this and my father told me that most of the times he was saying to the to his patients don't get something for me buy a lego to my kid because he loves them and this is the way i started to collect you know all these little things and i found myself at a certain point with so many things as you could see in the yeah. um in the, in the facebook and instagram stories so it's not that i i've been collecting them myself but oh. again i find i found myself with this huge collection <laughs> Um, I, I just wanted to specify this because it's not me, me collecting, but I'm super happy of having them, of course. Um, what I really collect myself is music. Uh, again, I, I might be a one topic only guy, but I really love music in all its forms. And I have a quite big collection of CDs here at my place. Um, I like other things. It's, it's not that I only <laughs> live out of music 24-7. <laughs> I like photography, I like computers, I like gaming, um, I like uh, cartoons uh, like mangas and animes. Uh, I'm, I'm a fan of, of yeah, uh, that kind of, uh, of art, um, so I have other words, but yeah, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> and how was it to tour with Nightwish? Well, this question can't be answered to me because I wasn't there, unfortunately. <laughs> Oh, no, no worries, no worries, no worries. But this was the old lineup. This was the old lineup of Temperance because in 2018, uh, Temperance had a huge lineup change. Um, and only Marco and Luca, the guitar player and the bass player, uh, Marco is also the mastermind of Temperance. He's the main composer. And, you know, I would say that Temperance is his and Luca's band. This is the reason why they, uh, they stay there. And all the shows done with Nightwish, they were they, they happened before 2018. But there is a funny story about it because um, I guess it was 2017. I'm not sure about the year. It maybe 2017, maybe 2016. And Nightwish came back to Italy um, in Mantova, and they wanted Temperance to be the opening act. And uh, Marco knows that I really love Nightwish. Uh, and he invited, before we were inside the band, me and Alessia to be there as stage managers for Temperance. <laughs> so, so basically, we were part of, Temper of the Temperance crew before we were into Temperance with Nightwish, actually. <laughs> so at least, yeah, we, we use this, this, uh, this chance to tell you the story. <laughs> oh, nice. Wow. Now it's, it's one of my goals. I really want to tour with Nightwish, even if Yetala is out now. Uh, so I'm really curious about what they will do um, with the with Lena, because I mean, to me, Marco Yetala was uh, a, a extremely strong part of the uh, of the entire Nightwish. Uh, I mean, not only musically wise, but also about the the, the image, uh, the impact of Nightwish was driven. A lot by by Hieta, so I'm really curious about what will happen now. But yeah, one of my life goals is to tour with them. So hopefully, uh, God will listen to you. <laughs> It'll probably happen again uh, with you in the band also. I yeah. I really hope so. I really hope so. I mean, I've got two chances because also Visions of Atlantis would perfectly fit with Nightly. So exactly. I I got my fingers super crossed. <laughs> But you will tour with Taria, right? Yeah, yeah. That's that is uh, awesome too. Absolutely, that's that's yeah. great. Also, because I mean, when it comes to symphonic metal, she is the queen. Uh, it doesn't matter if you like it or if you don't like the way she sings, because you know there are these endless and infinite discussions about who is the best singer of Nightwish, who was the best singer of Nightwish. I actually don't care because, in my opinion, Taria has her own style. Flori Jansen has her own style, and even Annette Holson, she has her own style. They are completely different one to another. And I mean, how can you compare something that is so different? How can you compare a classical singer with a modern singer? Uh, I mean, it, it doesn't make any sense to, to make this comparison, to me at least. Um, but for sure, she is part of the history of symphonic metal. 
because yes. without I believe that without Taria and without Nightwish, without the combination of Taria and Nightwish, bands like Temperance, bands like Visions of Atlantis probably wouldn't be existing right now because we've been all inspired by the style that they created and they also opened a huge door door because in my opinion before Taria and Nightwish the female singer in metal was not really appreciated right now i mean i it's hard to think of a symphonic metal band without a female singer so they really opened a door making people understand that even if you are a woman singing uh, in the metal scene there is nothing wrong and sometimes you can even do something better this is extremely important especially for the gender war <laughs> you know what i mean um and i believe that i mean it's absolutely perfect uh, what they did is awesome we the world should be thankful to them in 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 this context so yeah touring with her is like touring with someone you not only admire but you only you also have to be thankful to so yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nice, yeah, I already have my ticket, so... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> we will see each other there, yeah. <laughs> we'll see each other, for sure. <laughs> your other band is called Visions of Atlantis. What are your thoughts regarding Atlantis itself? <laughs> nice question. Um, well, uh, again, as I told you before, I'm a video gamer, uh, and I believe it was the end of the 80s or the beginning of the 90s when a nice video game came out it was called indiana jones and the fate of atlantis you know uh in the 80s this these topics were really um trendy <laughs> i would say and this was my first i was really young of course i was like seven or eight and i was extremely fascinated by by the world of atlantis um, and I remember that I started to uh, inform myself. Back in the days, there was no Wikipedia, there was no internet. I mean, the access to internet was not that um, that easy as it is right now. Sometimes people don't really realize uh, the amount of information they could access to with just a click. Back in the days, you had to get your encyclopedia, you had to get to your books and start searching what is this Atlantis thing? What is this? Uh, I don't know, even if you wanted to know about science or history, you only had the encyclopedia. You couldn't really, yeah. you know, go on Google and search on Google things. Um, and I remember they was extremely fascinated by this mysterious world. Um, I tend to think myself that uh, it's a legend, of course, uh, but it's it's a metaphor to tell you how, you know, uh, the more you uh, eat from the world, the more you, the more you, uh, what's the word for this? The more you uh, make use of the world uh, and without caring of his or its health, the more yeah. you risk to, to end up wrongly. Atlantis was a super advanced, you know, in the legend, Atlantis was a super advanced and super technologic uh, society. Uh, that ended up to be drowned uh, because they didn't think of the consequences that their, you know, usage uh, of, of things uh, would have developed. So this is a topic that is extremely modern, if you think of it, because we are, we are uh, making a wrong use of the world that we have. Gaia, the song from Temperance, talks about it. Um, to the universe that is some from Visions of Atlantis is pretty much the same. Uh, they have the same concept and it's about environment and I know I, environmental, um, I, I, you know, we are telling people to take care of what they are doing and to be aware of what we are doing with the world because otherwise we risk to end up like Atlantis did, drowned. You know, with the ice melting and everything. So, yeah. let's take an example from that legend and let's make, you know, some and let's pay attention. Yes, nice. Okay, the last question. Oh, nice. How is okay. it going with the visions of Atlantis? Uh, sorry, again, I didn't hear because is it I. Is going now with visions of Atlantis? Uh, right now, we are working on a new album. Right now, we are working on a new album. Uh, Actually, 
I will uh, get in the studio to record the vocals okay. in two weeks. Uh, it should be in the on the 15th of March, so half okay. of the month. Uh, hopefully everything will work out properly because, uh, of course, this is work. So we will have the chance to travel throughout the borders because of working reasons, and this should be allowed. I will get the vaccine on the 7th of March. I will be vaccinated against the COVID, so it will be another uh, positive thing, uh, especially considering that I'm moving. So I'm taking all the precautions that are that are needed. I will test myself before traveling. And if everything works, I will enter the studio in two weeks. We have like 12 songs that are ready. Um, five, six of them are songs of mine. So it's an honor this time to uh, have been such a huge part of the composition pro process. But to be completely honest, um, everything was co-worked with Clementine because we gathered in Udine when we could actually still <laughs> travel freely. And we've been working on the vocal lines, on the overall arrangements, and everything was then sent to Felix, our, our producer. Uh, so if everything will be, uh, will follow the plans within the end of May, probably we'll have the new album ready. And the idea is to release it this year. The only thing that we are thinking of if, of course, the connection with live shows, because we don't want, well, no band wants to release an album and not to promote it live. So we will have to see what happens with the touring. We are positive because we have a tour schedule in September and another one in December. And I mean, I believe that we will have less than 500 people at our show uh, at our shows so probably this would be possible because if everything works if the vaccine keeps on spreading if the virus is slowly weakened uh, by you know the herd immunity and and everything there is a chance to restart touring in fall 2021 in my opinion but of course only for smaller shows below a certain amount of people. I don't believe that bigger shows like 1000, 2000, 5000 or big festival will happen this year. But maybe club shows, they, they will be possible. And this is our hope, because if this will be possible, we will tour and we will release the new album and everything will work out properly. Even with Temperance, we have a tour with Leaves Eyes in October and it would be awesome to actually perform with all the precautions needed, you know, with uh, the check at the entrance, maybe they will force people to, you know, at least bring a negative test before entering the uh, the venue. But I believe that we all want to go back to shows, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. we do. <laughs> so we will do what's needed. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you so much, uh, Michaela, for this interview. You're welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Really welcome. <laughs> and yeah, guys, check out their new acoustic AP. And if you don't mind, can we close the interview with a nice picture for the video with our metal horns? Of course. Of course. All right. Thank you so much, Michaela. You're so, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for the nice you. interview. Thank you for the time spent together. And see you next time. See you soon at the Taria Tour. Yes, I'll see you on the roads. Yes, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.